That's a good song. Without a doubt, I'm saved. Perfect love cast us out fear. Amen. I'm glad the Bible, the Bible says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You can know that you know that you know. His Spirit's bearing witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. Not only a, a, a child, but then an heir, a joint heirs with Christ Jesus. I know tonight there's, there's a lot of things I don't know, but that's one thing that I'm assured of. When you know that you're saved, I mean, you got ground to stand on. He told Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what I'm standing on tonight. Amen. If you don't know you're saved, you're scared to death. Amen. That's why the, uh, the, you, a lot of people's living in fear because they don't know they're saved. There's no guesswork to it. I don't have to wait to know the, to get to heaven to know I'm saved because the Spirit of God set up residence in my heart when I got saved. Amen. There's a lot of things that I, through life, you know, I, you, you, you wander about and you're not sure of, but that's one thing I know without a shadow of a doubt. In 1986, on a Wednesday night, the Lord saved my soul. Amen. There's a lot of things that I, you think about change. I've never got over that change. Don't remember what I prayed. Don't remember a whole lot was going on that night. I just remember people got to testifying. I said, I'm glad I'm saved. And I know I'm saved. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me that night and told me who I was. Told me I was lost, but introduced me to Jesus the same night. Amen. I'm glad that when that, that night changed my life, forever. I've had to go back to that night several times in my life when uncertainty tried to creep in, when fear tried to overwhelm me, when doubts tried to overwhelm me, the Spirit of God let me know I'm saved. I'm one of God's children. You know you're saved, it'll get you through anything and everything in your life. When you don't know you're saved, you're unsettled in everything in your life. Does that make sense? You're unsettled in everything in your life when you don't know for sure that you're saved. But when you know you're saved, and I'm not talking about church membership. Church membership don't save you. Having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Knowing that. I think about Luke 10, 20. He said, Rejoice not the evil spirits that subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your name is written in heaven. There's a lot of, I, you know, a lot of things we brag about. There's one thing we can boast in, and that's Jesus Christ, that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Not worthy, but He made me worthy. Good to be saved, ain't it? Good to, good to have that feeling that you don't have to worry about. I know death is coming, but I'm not worried about it because there is no sting to death for a child of God. I was talking to somebody the other day. We was talking, said, you know, if you sit and ponder on life, you'll get depressed. You really will. If you, if you think about getting older and, and you get uh, things happen to you, the older you get and, and you get sick and things happen, you go through things, you lose loved ones. And then it's appointed unto man once to die. We're all going to die, ain't we? After this, the judgment. But you, you think about all the things in life. If we, if we sit and dwell on it, we, we, we get discouraged. But ain't it good to know that through all these things, we have one that has given us the victory. I don't have to be defeated through life. I claim the victory through life. Storms going to come. Storms came to... Both houses, both both foundations. Wise man built his house upon a rock. Foolish man builds his house upon the sand. Storms still come to both houses. Lost or saved, you're still going to have tr a trouble. But it's how you go through those troubles. You have Jesus in your life. You saved. You're claiming the victory. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. That means trouble. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. That's ground to shout on. We dwell on that. I know without a doubt I'm saved. Amen. We just need sometimes mark, mark ground and just say, devil, 
You ain't across in this line. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I, I think of Earl Stallard a lot. Earl Stallard was V. Hensley's a, a sister, 92 years old, 91, 92 year old. One Sunday morning she came to the altar and she said, she looked up to, at me before she stood up and she said, the preacher, she said, preacher, the devil still tries to make me doubt that I'm saved. I said, well, Sister Earl, what do you do? She said, well, I have a little talk with Jesus just like I do, did right now, and I know better than that. We just need to tell the devil I know better than that. He's a liar and a father of it. Amen. Good to be here tonight. Thank the Lord for what we feel. Anybody got anything on your heart? Yeah, let's do that. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost, save knowing Christ. Amen. Little John said he is precious while leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, may I humbly testify. Did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him. When I can see no way, He makes a way. Did I mention he's been faithful to every promise he's ever made me? I love him, that's all I want to say. Amen. How many sermons can be preached about this Jesus? How many songs can be sung? Amen about God's Son. There are not enough words. words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all my Savior has done. Did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him. When I can see no way, He makes a way. Did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me? I love Him, that's all I want to say. He's been faithful to every promise he ever made me. He's faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful to every promise that he made. Never leave us, never forsake us, but go with us all the way even to the end of the world. He's, he's faithful tonight. A friend that sticker closer than any brother. He's faithful. People will turn on you. People will, will, will change, but He never changes. I'm the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He said, I change not. That's one to trust in. That's one to confide in. Amen. Thank the Lord. Anything else?
Let's read Psalms 46. We'll pray here in just a little while. Just feel like just going ahead and getting right into it. Psalms 46, verse number 1. Stand with us for reading of God's Word tonight. Psalms 46, verse number 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, through the storms, He's still a refuge. Through the earthquakes, there's still a refuge. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her at that right early. The heathen rage and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered His voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations He hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cutteth the spear and sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for the reading of Your Word. I just pray... God, that you just give us, Lord, that what we stand at need of tonight. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Refuge is a place of safety. Uh, back in uh, biblical times, a refuge was a place where, where, where someone maybe was uh, uh, in trouble, uh, maybe uh, uh, for manslaughter, and, and a refuge was a place for them to go until uh, uh, all was lifted and the, that uh, king there that was at that time would pass away. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a refuge, a place of safety. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, other places called uh, a refuge, maybe called a sanctuary. Uh, we've got uh, what we call a ba uh, bear sanctuary around here, a refuge uh, uh, for, for animals that... that, that uh, no hunting's allowed. It's a it's a place of safety. Amen. I'm glad God is our refuge tonight. I'm glad that that He is our high tower. He is the one that we can run to uh, when 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 trouble is around us and we feel like that we're going to break beneath the load. I'm glad that we can go to God. He not only says that He's our refuge, but He's a, our strength, our strength in the very present. A, a, a very present help in trouble. Now my mind went uh, uh, to verse number 10 where it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now you think about uh, uh, Elijah there. When Elijah there, when he, when he did that, what God did, ha had bid him to do, and how uh, there that uh, oh, he came up against the prophets of Baal, and he began to, uh, uh, he said, I want to, uh, I you to take your bullock, and I want you to I want you to cut it up, and I want you to I build the altar there, and I want you to uh, I want you to call out to your God. He said, "How long ought we going to be between two opinions? If God be God, serve Him. If Baal be God, serve Him. But this day we're going to find out what what who, who's God." And and so you know the story. They they went a half a day, and they called on Baal and. And Elijah, he made light of it. And he said, well, maybe he's asleep. Uh, maybe you need to cry a little louder and wake him up. Uh, maybe he's gone on a far country. Uh, maybe, uh, 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 maybe, maybe he's, uh, he's not even there. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but they cried. They cut themselves and they jumped up on that altar and they, uh, they, they even, uh, tore it down there. How they, uh, uh, trying to call on their, their God Baal. I bet about noonday, Elijah there, he repaired the altar. 
I was thinking of that today, of how I had a lot of times that things are out of whack in our life. We need to repair the altar in our homes. Amen. We need to repair the altar in our life and get our prayer life back where it used to be. Get in tune with God. Amen. I believe sometimes we we get things uh, out of kilter in our life. Our priorities is out of line and, and therefore our prayer life ain't what it should be. Amen. And you can tell a big difference in your walk with God when your prayer life is not like it should be. You stand distantly. But you think about uh, how they repaired the altar. And he put the uh, bullock there and, and uh, the sacrifice there on it. And he took the, the barrels of water and, 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 and filled, uh, uh, just poured on that uh, uh, seven uh, times there and, and how that uh, the barrels of water there was filled and, and, and poured upon that object of the trench. It ran down in the trench. And the Bible says that he called on the Lord and God sent down the fire. Amen. All right. And then after God sent down the fire and, and, and consumed the sacrifice, there it was that uh, uh, Elijah went after the prophets of Baal and, and he killed them there that day. And, and uh, Ahab... Uh, I went and told Jezebel what had happened, and, and she said, uh, 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 As you've done to them, I'm going to do to you. And he went and, and sat down upon a juniper tree, and he thought within himself, I'm no better than my father's. I'm just ready to go. Lord, just take me on out of here. But God sent him an angel uh, with, with some mead and, and a cruise of water and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for thee. The Bible says he fell asleep and the angel woke him up the second time of the same thing. And he ate and went on the street, a strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. But he went into a cave and, uh, and heard all, had seen all the commotions, the lightnings and the thunders and the, the earthquake, but God wasn't in that. But in a still small voice, God spoke to Elijah. And he asked him this question, What doest thou here, Elijah? A still small voice, and he said, What are you doing here? What doest thou here? Well, I just thought he had a pretty good excuse to be hiding in a cave, but it wasn't good enough for God. I just said, Lord, I've, I, I've, I'm the only one left. Well, they've, 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 uh, uh, the prophets of Baal, they've, uh, uh, they've, uh, Worshiping him and, and how that uh, everyone is turned against you, Lord. And I, I'm, I'm the only one left. Verse number 18 of 1 Corinthians, or uh, excuse me, 1 Kings 18 or 19. It says, the Lord said, Yet I, I, I have left 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. We feel like sometimes we're all alone. That, that, no, that nobody else is, is seeking the Lord. But let me remind you, there is a remnant tonight that is still looking to God, that is still trusting in the Lord, that's still doing the right thing. Amen. Not everybody's gone to the dogs. Amen. Not every church has gone to the dogs. And not every preacher is compromising. Not every church is compromising. There's still a remnant tonight uh, that, it, that, that, that is looking to God and doing the right thing. Amen. And going the, uh, 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 following the Lord in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elijah thought he was the only one left. He was ready to die. He was ready for God to come and get him. But God said, I'm not through with you. He even said here, he said, Go return on thy way, verse 15, to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king uh, over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nishma, uh, shall thou anoint king, be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphath, of Abimeloah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So, so here, here it was. God had some things for, for Elijah to do. Amen. We may think sometimes that, that our work for the Lord is over, but God has the last say so of that. We don't. Amen. And, and, and you know, it takes sometimes getting in a, a still place in your life for God to get your attention. I've noticed sometimes for God to get some people's attention, He's got to get them flat on their back before He gets their attention. 
But don't think God can't get your attention. God can. No matter how proud, no matter how hard-hearted someone is, God can get their attention. God got all of our attentions, didn't he? Amen. Being still means that you're not doing the talking. He is. Have you ever, you ever noticed something? You, you try to help somebody. Maybe you're talking to somebody and you're trying to, trying to help them. And they're talking while you're talking. That's hard, ain't it? It's hard to, hard to get through to that person. Here you're trying to help them, and they're telling you how to do it instead of listening to you. Don't we do God the same way sometimes? Here God's trying to show us and give us direction, give us peace about the matter, give us direction about the matter, but all the while we're telling Him how to do it. A lot of times our prayer lives can turn into a wish list, telling God how to do it, and then we'll say, Lord, if it be your will, amen. But I wonder how productive things would be if we just say, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening today, Lord. I'm not going to tell you how to, li- how to, how to do my life and how, how to... How to do the, uh, figure out these situations or whatever. But Lord, I'm listening. You show me. The Lord says, be still, know that I'm God. Be still. And when you're still, you're not telling God how to do it. You're not trying to figure things out on your own. And I'm the world's worst for it, trying to figure things out. Just this old Adam nature, I guess. But it still is not an excuse, is it? We can blame things on the old Adam nature all we want to, but it's still not an excuse, is it? But if we'll just be still and listen and let God be God in our life. Maybe you're going to work, and that's a good quiet time to just get in tune with heaven. Don't turn the radio on. don't, Don't talk on the phone. Just listen to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm listening. And just be still. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We're very impatient people. Very impatient people. Not only are we impatient when things are not timely in our daily lives. Maybe your food don't come on time as quick as you think it should in a restaurant. Or, or, or the drive through window is not as quick. Or, or, or whatever it may be. We're very impatient in things like the doctor's office. We're very impatient. But I believe, I, I believe sometimes we're impatient with God too. We're very impatient with God. Sometimes, you've heard me say this before, I believe we deal with the answers of no better than we do wait. God answers yes, no, and wait. And I believe sometimes we deal with no better than we do wait. Oh, it kills us to wait. But God teaches us through waiting, patience. And I read this morning, I didn't read the next verse of Romans 5 there, but let's read it. Romans 5, this morning as I read there about having access Let's read on, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Trouble. That's what tribulations mean. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. If you never had a trouble, if, if something never, if you never went through a situation that caused you to wait upon the Lord, would you even learn how to wait on God? But God uses situations to teach us to wait. Man's growing pains right there. Mary and Martha, they thought he was four days late for, to raise Lazarus. They thought he'd, all hope was gone. They'd waited. They was impatient with him. But I guarantee you, through it all, they learned, wait on him. 
He's trustworthy. He knows what he's doing. We didn't understand why he was letting all that happen. They even told the Lord how impossible it was for Lazarus to be. I've caught myself telling the Lord how impossible it is. How about you? Lord, he stinketh by now. He's been dead four days. He stinketh. He's decaying, Lord. My brother shall live again. Lord, I know he'll live again in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. They knew that. But they just needed to be reminded of it. And I believe we know that too. Sometimes we got to be reminded of it. And to be reminded, you just got to be still. Just be still. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed something? There was one morning, one Sunday morning, I, I woke up. And every negative thing in my life was on my mind when my eyes opened. Everything that was going wrong in my life. I don't know about, has that happened to you all? Everything you're dealing with, that's the first thing you think of. And maybe not only thing, it's things. The things are going wrong. Corbin, Corbin was dealing with the cancer, was still living in the parsonage, and, and, and he was, had a rough week, and uh, things, things was, just, was just hard. Y'all remember, it was just hard. Things in the church, things going on in the church. People just, uh, I'll just be honest with you, every negative thing about, you know, people not caring about coming to church. And, and, and I was focused on them that didn't want to be here more than the ones that did want to be here. Uh, I mean, that's just, pastors have to deal with stuff like that. But anyway, the Lord got my attention while I was laying there that morning. The birds were singing. Singing loud, too. The birds were singing. And they got my attention. And the Lord said, Are you not much better than they? Are ye not much better than they? Consider the lilies. Amen. Consider the, the fowls of the air. Are ye not much better than they? So I come to church, and the Lord was just, the Holy Ghost was saying, pay attention this morning. Just be still. Went into the prayer room and Miss V. Hensley. I miss these in our church. We've lost a lot of pillars in our church, haven't we? She said, the Lord wants me to share this, and I don't know why, but I'm going to. She said, I cut my finger this week very badly with a knife, a butcher knife. I was cutting something in the kitchen, and she said the blood was just pouring. And she said, I was trying to get into the living room where my Bible was, and she said blood was just going everywhere. And she said, I just stopped. And I said, Lord, I can't get to my Bible, and I don't rightly know which verse it is. But Lord, I believe your word. Where it talks about stopping blood. Ezekiel 16, 6 is what she was referring to. But when she was sharing that, and I, I, I guess a lot of you remember her sharing that. Kenneth remembers it. The Holy Ghost began to just move in there. And boy, I tell you, I thank God for prayer room and how, how God comes and meets with us. But think about how that God just began to see there. And they'd come out into the, in the service and the choir began to sing. People began to praise the Lord and the Spirit of God began to move, began to preach. And I, I don't make a lot of eye contact, but God, God just zoomed me in on some people. It was just big tears just flowing down their face of, of the preached Word of God. And after the service, all that day, I was just sitting, just thinking about all the things that God was showing me. 
And the Lord said, I've showed you enough reasons to keep on going. To keep studying to show yourself approved. To keep giving me your all. Sometimes we, we get burnt out. We get at our wit's end. And sometimes we be tempted to be slothful on, on the Lord. Slothful means lazy. Sometimes we get lazy on the Lord. But the Lord showed me a lot that day by just being still and listening and watching. We miss out on a lot of things by not being still and knowing He's God. Man, if we'll just be still, God can blow your mind. God can show you a lot. God will strengthen you. God will give you. Elijah went on the strength of that made 40 days and 40 nights. There's no difference in that heavenly manna that he's sending to you and I today. Let's just be still. Know that he's God. He'll strengthen you. When you don't feel like nobody understands, remember, he understands. Broken heart. God can, God can mend the broken heart. Just being still. And knowing he's God. Knowing you're one of his. That's the message tonight. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, your word tonight. And help us, Lord, to be still. Help us, Lord, to be still. And know that you're God. Lord, to rest. Rest in you. And rest in the fact, Lord, that we're one of your children. And rest in the fact that, God, you know the remedy for the situation. You are the remedy for the situation that we're facing. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.